Untamed. Welcome to the podcast, people. It's a different kind of podcast on a Friday. Uh, not all the bells and whistles that we put together during the week. It is a review show of what we've done during the week, and it's a preview show of all the sport on the weekend. We used to have Fridays off. But Dear Leader's Christmas present was to demand that we come back to work on Fridays and we talk about the sport that's going on on the weekend. So, today on the program, Peter Lester. If you have watched any of the America's Cup over the last couple of decades, you know this man, you know his voice. The unveiling last night, the AC75 boat, Ty Horta. Peter talking all about that. Costos Corner, Jason Costigan running through game by game. The NRL Round 7. Eric Thompson. The foremost motorsport writer in this country, been writing for the Herald for decades. Topol, motorsport parks, supercars back in New Zealand this weekend. We caught up with Ryan Fox, post Masters. You know, yeah, pretty impressive first couple of rounds, disappointing over the last couple of rounds. But if you'd asked Foxy, I reckon, at the start of the tourney whether tried for 38th, he would take. I'm sure he would take. So Ryan joined us, very generous with his time again. And good on you, Super Rugby. There's only four matches in this week's round, but three of them, I reckon, are well worth a look. What? Why? Yeah. Andrew versus Canes tonight. Uh, you can watch most of that before you switch over to the Warriors, but it takes away the afternoon La Toka heat factor. Then you've got the Blues versus the Brumbies to, uh, tomorrow night. That's two versus three. That's an absolute blockbuster. Then you've got the Battle of the Wooden Spoon. Crusaders, away force. Plenty of sport to talk about today. Let's waste no time. Well, his voice and his name are absolutely synonymous with yachting in this country and also the coverage of the America's Cup on telly. Peter Lester, welcome to the show, mate. G'day, Martin. Great fun seeing you last night. Great fun being there at the unveiling and the naming of a Tai Horo. And we got to see up close and personal just feed away this, well, I don't even know if it's a boat. I mean, to me, it's a it's a man-made water shark is what it is. <laughs> well, it is a boat because it floats. Well, some of the time it floats and then it uh, rips out of the water and gets around the harbour at 50 knots. I mean, it, it's, being there last night, man, and I, I, look, I've been to a lot of these things now, but it, it never ceases to amaze me in such a small time. And, and I'm talking now, what, 11 years from when we, we first saw um, Aotearoa, the big cat foil off North Head. And now we, we look at this new boat go in the water and how advanced it is, even relating back to last America's Cup. I mean, it really does, uh, yeah, testament to Team New Zealand, how, how far they've moved that program on in the last three years. It's almost reinventing the wheel every time, isn't it? Because, you know, we were standing there, and I'm not name dropping here, people, but we were talking to, to Tony Ray about this. And what we were looking at just a couple of America's cutback at the at the trampoline where the boys would be j jumping across the boat, all of that kind of stuff. You look yep. at this thing, it's absolutely and utterly different, totally different. Yeah, it is. It is. And, and refined, very, very refined. I mean, when we were standing in the shed after and it was pouring with rain and we waited, for, we we're a bunch of wimps, actually. We waited yeah, for we the did. rain yeah, to we stop. Did. Yeah, we did. And we went down and I, I think I said to you, oh, let's go down and have a look at the deck layout of this thing. You know, it might, it might be kind of interesting. Well, we got down there and there isn't a deck layout no, because no. everything, everything that they use to sail that boat is below decks. And, and all you're seeing is a platform that has been optimised aerodynamically so that that thing slips through the air and the water as quickly as possible. And, and down below, and I think Senior, who's the head boat builder for Emirates Team New Zealand, spoke in that video clip that we saw and just said, you know, the, the volume of the boat has got smaller. And so, I mean, you know, the, the workable working area down below under the deck but the equipment inside has got more so therefore they have to be very efficient how they put the boat together so it'll be fascinating down track i'd love to be able to stick my head down below and have a look at the attention to detail in the engineering because that is the heart of that boat uh, the last one that went out, I was very fortunate. Um, Grant took us out on that and, and just let me have a little head poke underneath. And it looked like when you open the back of your old computer. I mean, and honestly, mate, there's just... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, or, or 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 perhaps the cockpit of a of a of a jumbo jet. The electronics were incredible, um, and the flashing lights. Uh, what was going on down there? There was so much cabling and everything else. 
Uh, this is the thing. I mean, what you're talking about is you're talking about an engineering like, a, can I say a Formula One car? It doesn't have an engine, but everything else. Well, uh, I think Bob Field, not last night, but in the past, Bob Field, who's the, the chairman of Emirates Team New Zealand board, ha- put it so well a couple of years ago when he said, hey, it, it, it's not a sports team. It's a technology company that happened to race yachts. And, and I think that's what we really saw last night. I sort of got a little bit of wind of it earlier in the uh, last year when, when I was lucky enough to be in Villanova for the prelim- the America's Cup preliminary regatta. And Grant invited um, me to go up to Barcelona before we flew out. Went into the boat shed and had a bit of a gu- guided tour of Te Ruhatai. And, and, and I mean, I'm used to seeing that boat and I've seen it a lot. And, and I went on board and I went, hold on a minute, this isn't the boat I saw in Auckland. And, and sticking my head again down below through a hatch, they had done a complete revamp of that boat to test and to develop what we saw there last night. So Teruhatai really has been a working test bed wow. for what we saw last night. She's not, she, she wasn't the boat that won the America's Cup. How form it was, but I'm talking the the inner heart of the boat had been um, had been used as a prototype for this boat. Peter Lester with us now. The old mate Mark Orams. I was exchanging some messages with him today, and this is his view. He said it's a weapon for sure. He said I feel sorry for the cyclists who are hidden down low as hamsters on a wheel, maxing out their HR for as long <laughs> for as long as they can. He said, <laughs> but this is the bit that I wanted to put you. He said I admire their athletic abilities. But we may as well allow stored energy to run the systems as on the AC40s and ditch the cyclers. What do you think about that? Well, I mean, that's a view. Um, and, and maybe in time, that's where it will go. Uh, but, but I don't think the sport yet is quite ready for that. Um, certainly, you look at that working environment for the cyclers and it, it's hell. It's, a, it's, uh, again, it's I, in a cave, I, I, a nasty, hot, sweaty cave. And they, their heads are not above the, the gunnel or the, the deck of the boat because, of course, that's upsetting the airflow. So when you look at Hamish Bond there last night, I mean, and, and Marius van der Plug, they, they are the heart of that boat. And, and they are the people that generate the hydraulic capacity to allow the trimmers, the likes of Nathan Outridge and Peter Burling and Blair Took and the rock stars, you know, Andy Maloney, who are the four sailors on board. Only four sailors on Only board. Only four sailors on board. Four yeah. And four cyclists. Amazing. And I mean, without that hydraulic capacity generated by the cyclists, the boat can't sail. To hear the full interview, download the platform at the App Store. Via Platform Plus, you can go back and listen to the whole show and all of the interviews in full. We're going to play a little game called What Is More Chance Of Happening and run through the Super Rugby figure. Actually, let's do that now. We need to talk. Yeah, your favourite game. We need to talk. Uh, What Is More Chance Of Happening? Vim and Vigor, please. What Is More Chance Of Happening? Let's do the NRL. Every Friday we do the NRL and Super Rugby separately. So. Grant's just texted and says, he says, Martin, he said, I don't know why you bother asking Lachlan any questions that don't involve sport. You're wasting your time. Ooh. He's a walking Google when it comes to the NBA or the EPL, but that's as far as it goes. Ooh. All right, Grant. Oh, okay, Grant. I mean, he's, he's pretty on, good with the NRL as well. He's 26, mate. I mean, he's, he, you don't expect too much, you know. I get your point. Yeah. I don't ask him a lot about girls. You're not very good at that. I'm not <laughs> very good at that. Hey. Hey, hey, Will. Yeah, well. No, I'm not yeah, fair enough. Yeah. So what is more chance of happening, Lock? Next! I'll give you a couple of scenarios, mate. You tell me more. The Dragons beat the Warriors tonight. Good chance. Or the Dolphins beat the Eels at 10 p.m. tonight. Now, this is in Darwin. Uh, don't forget, Kempe yesterday, I think, and we'll replay this for you. Uh, I think he said 30 plus. 13 plus. The Eels never... Oh, I've got a text from him. 30, he says. Eels... Never win in Darwin. So why do they take games up to Darwin? I don't know. Really strange. We bumped into an old colleague last night who's a big Eels fan. Yeah, huh? He mentioned, you mentioned up in Darwin, and he just immediately said, why do we play there? We always lose. We always lose there. Um, so I think the Dolphins have a great chance. I also think the Dra- look, I'm not saying the Dragons are favourites, but they've got a good chance because the Dragons have... They've got um, a chance. They've, they've, had some good, good chance. they've had some good performances this year. They can't really do it... Uh, Week on week because they beat the Tigers last week. Yeah, uh, I think there's more chance the Dolphins win. Absolutely. Okay. Yes. What is more chance of happening? 
The Dragons upset the Warriors tonight. Let's not be silly about this. It would be an upset. Or Tigers beat Panthers. 5 p.m. tomorrow. No, Let's just not no, bloody happen. That's, that's an easy Next. one. Next! Right. Dragons beat the Warriors or Titans beat Manly at 7.30 tomorrow. Now, I, I'm I'm hoping the Titans do a Detroit Lions and go through 0-24. I want to see a team... They won't. They, play, they actually played quite well against the Raiders last week in the sense they just... Actually, if we get time today, we must actually... Like, um, Des has has had another press conference and he's just gone toe-to-toe again with Ricky Stewart. This is great. Oh. This is what we miss in Super Rugby. A couple of coaches having a go at each other. Yeah. It's not serious. I bet these guys text each other and message each other afterwards, and they're probably old mates because they played around the same time. Yeah. I mean, they might not like each other, like be best buddies, but they'd have that mutual respect. Yeah. But when it comes to your team cheated, my team cheated, you owned the ref, you bloody bollock, all of that, you know, you get this back. This is what we love, isn't it? It's just a bit of theatre. Yeah, bit of verbal. So. Well, it's exciting. It's just something. It's a little bit of. It's, it's, you just put in a bit of paprika on top of your boring old mac and cheese. It's, this is the married at first sight bit of the NRL. They do so well. There mm. are storylines and narratives and soap operas. And I'm not saying driving your car at 100k down a suburban well, street as well. But 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 this kind of stuff, where you know those coaches of two competing teams don't have to like each other. I don't like your team. Mm. I want you to lose. Yeah. That's that's okay. Yeah. Well, hearing you say, "Oh my God, the Crusaders coach said that to the Blues God, coach." You don't think the Warriors are stacked now? How do you say that? We've got Fisher Harris. We're winning the premiership. So, what is more chance of happening? The Drags <laughs> beat the Wars tonight, or the Titans? Well, Titans aren't beating Manly. Are they? Well, I, it's funny because I was uh, watching a clip of a, a Manly podcast, like a fan podcast, and the guy, it was quite funny. There was one guy saying, "I don't feel good about next week." He's talking after the win, uh, uh, the draw with the Warriors. He's like, "Who are we playing?" The Titans. Oh, great. Is it, in, is it on the Gold Coast? Yeah. Oh, let me guess. It's 5.30 on Saturday. So 7.30 is the on time. Yeah, it is. That's a banana skin. No, I'm uncomfortable. I don't feel good about it. Um, I still think Manly will win. Yes. But I just, I don't know. There's always a couple of games that the good teams just slip up on. And that's what the Dragons could be for the Warriors tonight. It's absolutely what the Raiders could be for Brisbane on Saturday. Absolutely what the Titans could be for the Seagulls. But I think the Seagulls will win. I got, I got, look, normally for the Wooden Spoon side, i got, I got a tiny bit of sympathy. I've always said, oh, OK, God, you losers. You're such losers. You, 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 I try and find some lovable in the losers, but i got nothing for the Titans. Well, I just, I just, well they're a bit of a nothing club. They're, 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 they are Fulham. They're Fulham of the Premier League. They're just nothing. They've got well, zero. Steady, full They've got run. no personality. Well, they'll dick you guys, hopefully, this weekend. But I just think that Probably. if the Titans weren't there, no one would miss them. The Gold Coast isn't going to miss them. The Gold Coast has got the Gold Coast, mate. It's got the GC. Yeah, and also they play like the era, the the hub of the Gold Coast is essentially Surfers Paradise, right? That's where everything goes on. If you live outside of there, well, I don't know. Is it really that great? Well, you live I, in I Upper Hutt. Know. You live in Upper Hutt on the and Gold Coast. And they play pretty much. They play in Upper Hutt. They play like thirty minutes out That's of it. Surfers Paradise That's in it. Rabina. Yeah. So. No, I, they've been in the comp since 07, so that's 17 seasons, not including this year. They've made the finals four times, and yeah. they've got about three or four yeah, wooden spoons. Honestly. They don't have any sort of legend. I mean, they had Scott Prince and Preston Campbell at the end of their careers, but they, don't, they haven't really birthed a player no, they and turned him into a look, superstar, and they, you know? they haven't established themselves there. They just haven't. They've tried and tried. I would rather that they introduce two more teams, got rid of them, put the PNG side and put another New Zealand side in. What yes! is more chance of happening? The Dragons beat the Warriors tonight. Well, we're watching this game, mate. Or Sticky Ricky beats your lot tomorrow night, 9.35 New Zealand time. Broncos are at home, big crowd. Raiders beat Broncos. Raiders beat the Broncos in this game last year. And Brisbane started... But it was at the end of the season. No, no, no. Brisbane started 5-0. and oh. Hosted the Raiders, no. and it was on Easter week, and I remember no. watching it. I was watching it with my old man. It's like oh, that's a gimme game. That's a gimme game, and we lost twenty to ten or twenty to sixteen, something like that. Yeah, they, uh, we don't actually have a great record against the Raiders. I don't think. Oh, I, uh, I actually think there's more chance the Raiders beat the Broncos and the Dragons beat the Warriors. We're still missing a few key players who are all coming back next week. Next by week, the way, Payne Haas, Adam Reynolds, Brendan Pickura, they're all mm-hmm. back next week. Um, so I, I actually think the Raiders have a good. Good chance. What is more ch- chance of happening? The Dragons beat the Warriors tonight. Or Gunny's Doggies beat the Knights 4 p.m. Dog, dogs beat the Knights. I, I put, put your house on it. Doggies are beating the Knights, I, I just, reckon. I've just got to check these times because I presume it's got something to do with the daylight saving that has happened. So normally we get a 6 p.m. and an 8 p.m. game on Sunday. This is 4 p.m. New Zealand time. Who are they playing? Is there th- are there three games on Sunday? No, Bulldogs Knights. Sharks Cowboys kicks off at 6. Daylight what a, savings what a, already um, changed, though. What a brilliant Sunday afternoon that is. Well, that's where I am. You've got the V8s on 
and then you got that. Okay, so who wins out of the dogs and the knights? Is there more dogs. chance that are, gunny's are, dogs? Are, yep. I think the dogs look good the last couple of weeks. I agree. I they've, like that um, left edge. I've started to become. I've, I've I've gone all LeBron on that left edge. Uh-huh. I think this guy Jury is such an undervalued player. He's got the quickest hands in the competition. He's got a brain on him, man. Jury, Jury. Who's Jury? Kiko Jury Fox. Cherry Bronson Cherry. Oh, Cherry is it? Okay. Sorry. I, he um. You know. You know what happened to him a Cherry, couple of years Jury. ago. He debuted in either 218, 219. Brilliant young player, played for the Sharks, and then got suspended by the NRL because he had some sort of substances. I don't know if it was recreational or performance enhancing, but he was banned by the NRL. Ah. And then he spent his whole years out of the game just bulking up. Oh, I tell up. you what, last week his hands were the best in the, in the comp. He he's just, good, he's a good player. No look passing. He just, I think he comes from quite a dodgy family. I think that's where he sort of got into things. But really? Anyway, I th- well, let me do the Simon Bunny. <laughs> really? It's rugby league? Really? Yeah. Anyway, Payne Haas doesn't I, come from a dodgy family. Apart from his mother crashing that car and burning those people uh, alive. Be nice to... Okay. Um, apart from that. Apart from that. Anyway, speeding dogs, away from the cops and, and murdering two people okay, in a car crash. All right, you made your point. What did Manu Vatave and all those people do in a um, few years back for the Warriors? What did um, Cameron George call it? Um, he made bad decisions. Yeah, pee dealing. Yeah. 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 Now, okay. I also think he and a few Warriors, was it him? Oh, sleeping pills and red bulls or bollocks, yeah. wasn't it, or something? Yeah, <coughs> whatever. Um, anyway, the uh, no, I've got a, I've got a six-league multi for the NRL this week. You know, the Dogs winning is one of them. I absolutely would put my money in the Dogs. The Knights are a bit, a bit of a strange team. They... they they're really hard to make out. They should. I think their record should be better than what it is, but also... I'd say that about the Bulldogs as well, Yeah, mate. well, they played well against Melbourne, who just got out of jail against yep. them, and then the week so prior to that beat the Roosters. so did Melbourne last night. Melbourne have now won four games, eight points or less. Are they lucky? Are they four and one or five and one? Five Melbourne. and one. So they have they beat Penrith 8-0. They beat Brisbane 34-32. They beat... Uh, Warriors... Warriors 30-26, I think it was. Something like that. Roosters now they beat eighteen twelve. Yeah, they lost to the Knights fourteen twelve. Doggies they beat by two points or four points last Doggies week. Doggies they beat by four. That's five games. Five games. Eight points. Eight points. There you go. Um, but Melbourne they, they did look the better side. To be fair, they looked more likely to score th- throughout the entire match than the Roosters. Um, Final anyway, one. Next. Dogs. More what is more chance of happening? The Dragons beat the Warriors tonight. It would be an upset on the table at the moment. Warriors in seventh, three one and two. That's three wins, one draw, two losses. The Dragons, see, this is the you know, this is the quirky thing about them. They've won three, they've lost three, but they've beaten teams that are below them and then they just bottle it the next week. So what happens? Or what is more likely to? Dragons beat the Warriors or the Cowboys beat the Sharks. Now that's a Sharks home game, six oh five Sunday. Cowboys coming off a loss, Sharks coming off a bye. I think the Cowboys are a better team. They didn't look it against the Eels last week. They looked terrible last week. That scoreline flattered them at 27-20. I still have faith in the Cowboys. Sorry, Sharks didn't come. Sharks actually beat the Rabbits. I'm sorry. So they had to buy the previous week. The Rabbits actually looked all right last week, I thought. Uh, I actually think there's more chance that the... It's a good point, actually, in that the home to the Sharks later in the weekend, Cowboys are up and down. I think there's more chance the Dragons beat the Warriors. Look, the Warriors don't have a great record against the Dragons. No, we don't. The Dragons no, also... Look, you can't fault them... Like, they're, they're losing games. They're not going to make the finals. They'll finish with, like, seven, six or seven wins probably this year. But they play what, like they play hard. They're not a team that I think is going out there and just pissing around and not trying. Let's talk motorsport. Eric Thompson joins us. ET, the supercars are back at uh, Topol, but this is the first one that you've missed since 2005. What's going on? I, oh, my, unfortunately, I had some... Well, unfortunately, I've stuck my knee up. I ripped some meniscus cartilage in a medial ligament and there was a slot for some surgery about a week and a half ago. So I hummed and hard and went, oh, I better get it fixed, otherwise I could wait for months. Well, years. So, yeah, decades. Yeah, well, yeah, forever. So I thought I'd take the opportunity and then I can't really walk that much on it and I'm not allowed to. And um, at my advanced age, Marty, I've got to look after the engine because I keep wanting to doing stuff. So... First time ever, so I'm a bit miffed, but still incredibly excited that um, supercars are back in New Zealand, back at Topo. It'd be an interesting track for everybody down there because um, nobody's really raced around there in a supercar. So clean sheet. And um, yeah, like I said, sold out. And Brody Kostecki is back. 
in the supercars. How's that for Topo? Well, all the of that, there's a lot to, yeah, that. hell of a lot to unfold there. So I know, I mean, this is great. This means you can sit on the couch all weekend with your feet up and watch every single aspect of it. Uh, let's go back to the first and foremost bit where you're talking about supercars and never race there. So, you know, how are they going to go on this particular track? What are, what are you expecting? Simple answer, Marty. Nobody knows. And that's what makes it so exciting. Um, all the drivers except Mostert, I think, is the only guy that actually hasn't done any laps around there. All the rest of them have been out here, done a few practice and testing laps. And, of course, all the Kiwis, the five Kiwis in the field, um, have all raced there you know, in, their, in their junior category days or in 86s or bits and pieces like that. So um, the thing that's going to challenge them all, there's about five different track surfaces there. There's some really old stuff, there's some not-so-old stuff, and there's some new stuff. Tarmax. So tyre degradation will be the nemesis for all of them. Nobody's really going to know what's going to happen with tyre wear, especially towards the end of the race. And if you think, remember that back straight or that straight down into that little mini chicane before you get into the start finish straight, they're, they're going like flat out down there. So towards the end of the race, as your old tyres start to wear down a bit, I mean, I'd be loving to sit, in, sit on that bank going into that corner just to watch how those cars are going to get all squirrely going into that left middle left hander down in there. So that's going to be a big challenge for the teams. And it's also the track, although it looks small, is nearly three kilometres long, but it's got that really weird visual illusion that it's not actually that wide. But they race the A1GP cars around there, and they're big units. But for fans, Marty, it's going to be really great to see those big bangers those big units funding around there side by side. There's quite a few overtaking places. That's good news. So it's going to just be, it'll be a hoot, mate. Sold out uh, weeks in advance. And so you will see more New Zealand sports fans at this event over the weekend than you will at, at any other. Uh, you know, as, 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 as much as the Warriors love the 27,000, the Blues get whatever, there's going to be like 140 or 50,000 or something stupid like that. Every single one of them wearing merchandise, just start adding all of this up. That's how popular this event is here. Pukakoya course shut down, so we go to Topol. You talk about Kostecki. Now, the, the first thing to check is what's on his helmet, Eric? Because I mean, if he doesn't have the right thing on his helmet, mate, he can't race. Mate, I was having an interesting conversation. I'm not going to name any names or any sponsors. Talking to a couple of the drivers for interviews for the, for the Herald and the roll-up. And again, there's, there's quite a bit of humour going around about what you can't or can't have on your helmet and what's this and what's that. I mean, it makes an interesting sidebar talking piece, but sometimes you've got to wonder, really, in the scheme of things? I know. Is it, I know sponsors, without sponsors, you don't have, you know, you know motorsport. Well, a lot of sport you don't have, but the whole helmet thing is a bit, yeah. Well, so mate, what I'll it is, is that, look, I look at it from the fans' point of view, mate, and do you know how much they care? Listen to that sound there. That's how much they care, mate. They don't. They didn't you know, even have a cricket there, Mark. No, no they, I mean, they, that's, the uh, look, and, and, and this is where they need to just, you know, get some perspective on it. I, look, and I totally agree with you, you know, without the sponsors, and I love the way that the supercar drivers and everything, they do so much work around that. But whether a guy's got Boost Mobile or Telecom or Spark or whether he's got two, I don't care. It doesn't make me run out and buy your product. But when you start bitching about it, it makes me think I won't buy your product. It's a double-edged sword, Marty, and you're absolutely right. There'll be a lot of people out there just say, well, no, nah, I'm not going to go with them because they've caused this. Yeah. And um, It's been an absolute distraction. It's something supercars didn't really need. Because if you think about it, it's really the Kostecki thing that has kept supercars sort of bubbling away in the background and the consciousness of motorsport fans. Because if not, you think that they've only had six races this year. You know, we're like we're nearly at the end of April. I think there's a bigger picture involved here with supercars. If they want to keep that category, you know, completely viable, they've just got to put more races in. You know, it's one of the reasons Van Gisbergen left. He said, I'd, I'd want to do more than 12 races a year or 12 race weekends a year. Well, hang on. And also, just let's make the point, the last one was Melbourne, which was a kind of a real Mickey Mouse racing event anyway. This is why I said yeah, at the no. time, they don't need it. They don't need to be in that F1 GP anymore. No, it's that, again, it's where it's sort of moving towards the business and sponsorship side of things. Let's showcase our sponsors in front of a global Formula 1 uh, le you know, led Formula One global um, audience, but then can you imagine somebody in Europe who's a Formula One fanatic 
wanting to watch that, do you really think you're going to sort of sit up and, and watch the supercars race, which is what? Supposed to be 17 laps, crash, and it turns out to be about nine or whatever it was. You know, nobody wants to see that. The tight five. Five separate sporting topics, roughly a minute or so on each. I mean, the bell reminds us to move on. We do. Bayer Leverkusen drew with West Ham today in the Europa League. Why should you care about that? Because Bayer Leverkusen have not lost a single game this year. They play in the Bundesliga in Germany, which is one of the top leagues in Europe. La Liga Spain, Serie A Italy, the Bundesliga, the Premier League. They're probably the four top leagues in the world. They haven't lost a game. They play 38 games like the Premier League does. And they've just played all 34, three, 34. 34. Okay, they've, they've gone through the German Cup, the, the, the League Cup, the bloody Super Cup. They've gone through the Europa. They haven't lost a single game so far this year. Team New Zealand, the boat yesterday. Was tonight. Rooster Storm last night. Jet Clary coming to the Warriors. Oops, scoop. Been tweeting about that all morning. Is this for real? Well, we've got a pretty good word on it, we think. Um, bigger news, Geordie going to Leinster or the fish coming to the Warriors. So we've got some topics to talk about. Let's talk about Leverkusen to start with. Now, Bayer Leverkusen have always had this cruel nickname in German football called Neverkusen because there was a year, and it was 2002, they beat Man United by Man United in the semi-finals of the European Cup to make it there. On the last day of the season, they were in top spot in the, in the Bundesliga. They were also in the German FA Cup final. What happened to them? They lost. They lost all three. Jeez. Yeah. And they've got close, but they've never, ever won anything in Germany. And now they are unbeaten. I don't know if there's any other team in any of the top European leagues that's ever gone through a whole season unbeaten. And I'm not talking about the Arsenal winning the Premier League. I'm talking about every, every single, single com- competition. I'm, lo- I'm looking at an article now. Uh, Leverkusen are unbeaten in 43 consecutive matches. This wow. was on the 15th of April. Uh, in all competitions... Equaling the record by a team in the big five European leagues, which was Juventus from May 2011 to May 2012. So they've just broken it now. So they've just broken it. So they've just broken it. And they scored late against West Ham. They scored in the 86th minute. Now, mm. they've had a couple of these. Where I a think, lot of these. Yeah. Um, their manager is uh, Xabi Alonso, isn't it? Yeah, Xabi Alonso. He was the guy that was going to go to Liverpool. Stop it. <laughs> but instead, you've got Rolf Rangnick. No, we... You have. You've signed the Portuguese version of Ralph you know Rangnick. You know what? I've, no, no. His name's Ruben Amaru. Yeah, he's Ruben. Been, he's, yeah, he's been much Well, he's been doing very well guy, with very Sporting well. Lisbon in, yeah, in, the, right. in the Portuguese, Portuguese League. Division, so he's done yeah. very well with the No, yeah. the top division. Yeah. But it's funny because all these managers, have, I've seen these tweets about all these managers at other clubs, clubs saying, oh, there's no truth to my links to Liverpool. Um, no, I'm, I'm committed to where I am. And it's all these blokes who've been sacked from other jobs. Like one of them was a Bayern Munich manager who got let go after about... A year and a half. It's all these guys who don't mean. It's it's it's, it's like it's like when Sir Alex was stepping down and Tony Pulis at Stoke saying, right. "Well, I, yeah. I, I I tell you, I know you guys are going to ask about these rumours linking me to uh, Man United. I'm, t- I'm I'm committed to Stoke." And they're like, Tony, well, there are no rumours. No, no, there are. I've seen a few. Uh, bloke out of Nigeria oh, tweeting right, about this it. Yeah. Me. This is what News Hub would do. Okay, uh, Giancarlo is going to Liverpool. Oh, no, I, 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 I tweeted the Liverpool Football Club, said the reporter, and and, yeah. and I sent a photo of Giancarlo. I haven't got a reply yet, but that's how News Hub do their news, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, anyway, on we go. Remember the name Leverkusen. The Team New Zealand boat. Uh, we started the show with this, talking about uh, with Peter Lester. A bit of a flash bash last night. A couple of glasses of red wine. Got a good bore on. Uh, got close to the boat. Um, got it just happened absolutely heaved down just as they were putting it in the water and doing the whole thing called Tai Horo. Uh, you can look up the meaning of that, but it's the sky, the sea and and all in between. Uh, beautiful looking. Mm. And I don't know whether that means anything, but it's kind of cool when it is because you look at it and there's a real wow factor to it. Again, if you're in Auckland and you're wandering around the waterfront uh, this weekend, time your run. Time it for around five o'clock when that boat comes back in and you know, it's great. Team New Zealand are good like this. Like, you can actually get right close by the fences. You can watch it being lifted out of the water and you can get to see. And then you can see. It's a bit like kicking the cricket pitch, you know, in the, it's the day three of a test at lunchtime. You can stand around and go, oh, God, look at those foils locked in there. Mm. Yeah. The the uh, the angle of the wingtip's certainly an angle. 
They were the, the shape of the hull is quite interesting, isn't well, it? Well, it's curved. Yeah. Very aerodynamic. I think yeah. I dropped that word in several times last so that'll night. That'll give you a few extra knots on the water, I reckon. See, this we're is... We're all experts, aren't we? This is what we were doing. We're all armchair admirals last night. Yeah. and Arms just folded. Yeah. Looking... In, For, yeah, just a slightly furrowed brown saying, you know what, Lester, I reckon that... Uh, I don't think there. I don't think there's much work going on on that deck during the the race, mate. No, Martin, you can't walk on it. He said so. Yeah, there's the odd. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, 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 yeah. I was just thinking that. Yeah, mm. I was thinking the same thing there. Was... Martin, they said that in the uh, introduction <laughs> of the boat. <laughs> oh, did they? I missed that. I was I was busy talking. I to, must. Uh... Yeah, I must have been talking to myself with another glass of wine. Hey, some great texts have come in, people. Keep them coming. Five oh five oh. We'll get to those in just a second. Uh, was tonight we talked about this briefly. I, I want to talk about this all show. Um, St George. Away, Look, ordinarily, I, I always say these are banana skin games and things like that, but you got to say, what, Lachlan, in the last couple of years, the Warriors are now a team that you don't get as worried about games like this as you used to. Like, no. the Warriors should win tonight. This is like Liverpool going to Fulham on the weekend. You should win that game. Yeah, I mean, there's a possibility, oh, right? But you should win that game, shouldn't you? You're a better team. Should win. Actually, the NRL is actually very similar to the Premier League, where there are distances between the best and the worst. Yeah, there but are. Geez, the, if, you, if you slip up slightly against one of the worst teams, they're going to beat well, you. Said, that's exactly it. And that's what the danger is for the Warriors yeah. tonight. If you're 5% off, uh, they should win. The, uh, I don't know what their record away to the Dragons is. Not I can't good, imagine. mate. It's I, not good. I think last year was the first time that we'd won in Wollongong. And if not the first time, the first time in a long time. Mm. I know that they, um, yeah... I, I've watched this lose to the Illawarra Steelers. There. I've watched this everybody. There was a year where the Warriors needed to win their last game. They kind of had to hope other results win their way, but they had to win their yeah, last and game. and they got smacked against the Dragons. Up, smacked up there by Lots. fifty. But yeah, terrible result. So, yeah, it's uh, look twenty thirteen. I think. And then the game after Eels against the Dolphins is going to be worth it as yeah. well. Bob, I'm just hoping you take it up the charter, mate, because I, I you're the Eels, but also you're taking it to Darwin. Yeah. What are you doing, mate? This is seriously, actually, this is a really bad, this is not a nice game for the Warriors, just back to that quickly. Like, seriously, you're taking on a team that's been pretty competitive in most of its games, got a good head coach, some good players. Well, yeah, Kempe sure. was picking them at the start of the year, wasn't he? He was yeah. saying that they're going to surprise. Yeah, but seriously, the Warri like, Warriors fans, cool it, because this... Oh, here we go. I'm just saying. Here we go. I'm just Here saying. We Here we go. You know, you should Here's win. Here's the nearly team telling us to call it. Not the nearly team. Six premierships, son. Since when, mate? Last century. When's 06. the last one you won? 06, 2000, 97, 98, 92, 93. Rooster um, Storm last night. Let's talk about that. Yeah. You reckon the Storm were always ahead. They always look better. I just got that feeling. I, okay. was, I was sort of, it was sort of on in the background. I watched sort of 20 minute blocks, if that makes sense. And I, I, I just felt, I tipped the Roosters, so I was back in the Roosters. And I just, I just felt the Storm looked better. They looked a much better team. They were much more... My only question is with them, Lachlan. Uh, the uh, is, if you've got Munster attack. injured, why wouldn't you try and get him right before the end of the season? Because if he plays continuously... He played last night. Yeah, I know. And he play, keeps playing on a bit of a niggle, and then he's got Origin as well. I mean, he's how been playing well, though. But how effective is he going to be? He's actually been playing really well. Well, When he yeah. says he's come back, maybe the niggle's not really bugging him anymore. Um... But no, I thought the Storm... I, I, I'll say this This was a similar story against the Broncos, I thought. Though they were a little bit more... I thought they were better last night than they were against the Broncos. They're a team that should be, in some of these games, should be winning by more. Uh, whether that's a bad thing or a good thing, whatever. But they, look, they looked much better than the Roosters last night. Who, I've got to say, I was all on them after round one when they beat Brisbane. They looked yeah, really yeah, good. They looked... They've been really disappointing since, the Roosters. Jet Clary. Remember the name. Uh, one of the Clarys, of course. He's the younger brother. I think he's seven. Or he might be 19 now. Um, he was rumoured to be coming to the Warriors last year. They got quashed. Well, heard it from a good source last night. This source knew in advance that Nathan Fisher-Harris was coming. James fisher You keep I calling keep him Nathan. Nathan. Why do I call him Nathan? I think his younger brother is Nathan, isn't it? Or I'm just making it up. Uh, James Fisher-Harris coming, and he said that, uh, I can tell you the next one is Jet, Jet Clary. And I said, well, when's that being announced? He said, I don't know, but he said, I can tell you that's the next guy. So mm. I took that as gospel, and... I don't think it's out of the realm of possibility. Sean Johnson has to be replaced at some stage. And if I'm sitting there and I'm I'm Ivan or I'm his son Jet thinking, OK, I'm not going to uh, be usurping Nathan for that spot. Maybe it might be better if I nip over the Taz, learn my craft a bit under Sean. I've got Andrew Webster. He's a good mate, close mate of Dad's. I've worked with him coach. before. Yep. Great coach. Not a bad place to land for a little no. while. There's a few things that work really well in the Warriors' favour. One, obviously, their form and how well they've been playing the last year or two. And 
the stability of the club pretty much from top to bottom that seems to now be there. Secondly, the coach, who is brilliant and also has a great relationship with Ivan Cleary and probably the entire Panthers roster. I'd say. The fact that James Fisher-Harris is going there, which proves that the big names want to go and play for the Warriors. Mm -hmm. And the other thing, as you said, he ain't going to be taking over Nathan's spot anytime soon. And Nathan's younger than me, so he's, or I think we're the same age. So he's he's playing for another eight, nine years. Yeah, yeah. So that all coming together... The thing, I was talking to my flatmate a bit about this last night, and I said, the only way the Warriors are ever going to be able to entice a really good heart, like a halfback who's in his prime, over, who can win you a premiership, is they are falling out of favour with their current club, and they're looking for somewhere to go. The Warriors get in there just in time, and then convince this guy, hey, if you go to the Warriors, or you come to the Warriors, we're playing really well, all we need is you. Yeah. If you win yeah. a premiership here, yeah. you're an immortal. You are. You're an immortal. You, are. You, you basically have done, and you've created history. Also what helps, Ivan's always spoken really highly of the Warriors and he loved his time here, which has always made me think that at the end of his career, maybe Nathan would come over after he's achieved all his premiership winning success with the Panthers. But that would also help with Jet Cleary coming here, which if the press is anything to go by, He's a gun. Yeah. He's a really yeah. good young yeah. halfback. I like the story, and I'm happy to promote the story, and I'm also happy at the end of it to be proved wrong if it isn't right. But it's it's fun to think about now that this is a possibility. Final one. What was the bigger news story? Geordie going to Leinster, and we're going to talk about that, uh, replay rather, our interview with Chris Jones, our mate out of England, about that, or the fish coming to the Warriors. Because we've already forgotten about Geordie, Barry, Oh, James Fisher-Harris coming to the Warriors. Coming to the Warriors. Without a, a doubt, story? without a doubt, okay. I think. All right, all right, I'm happy with that. Devlin. Have you seen my wiener? The platform. Ryan Fox with us. Tied for 38th at the Masters, mate. And look, you had a couple of absolute cracking rounds. Hit some beautiful shots. I mean, you're leading the tournament at one stage there. At the very start of the weekend, if I'd asked you the question and said, if you'd take a top 50, you probably would have said yes. But at the same time, I know that you'll be feeling really disappointed at the end of that because it was you, you, you were right there up until the, you know, the day of, of, uh, to the weekend, I mean. Yeah, look, it was one of those weeks, if you'd have given me how I played beforehand with the little form I had and how little confidence I had going in, I certainly would have taken it. And then I actually felt really good out on the golf course, which was a nice change. Um, I played the, easily the best golf I've played all year um, on no doubt the hardest golf course we've played all year, especially, you know, Thursday was pretty brutal in the wind, but the, at least the greens were soft. Then Friday was just as nasty as it gets. I, you know, a bunch of guys were quoted as saying that's as hard as I've ever seen Augusta play. And I played really good the first two days. And um, Saturday, Sunday, the golf course was baked out. We had a bit of breeze on Saturday as well. And, um, you know, I felt like I played really well and left a bunch out there and then, you know, had a break on 17 that, you know, kind of pricked the balloon a little bit. You know, I, th I thought I had a really good shot in there and looking like making three, it had a, probably a chance of making two and all of a sudden hit the flag and walk off for seven and had a bit of a brain explosion down the last and made bogey as well. And it's, that kind of deflated me a little bit. It was killed the momentum. And then again on Sunday, I went out and played great, got off to a really good start and didn't quite have things going my way on the back nine, which seemed to be the trend for the week. And now I'm standing on the 15th with a, three footer for birdie to go one under for the day. And, you know, at that stage is probably looking like, you know, finishing in the top 20 or close to it. And then I missed that and, and double 17 and bogey 18 and kind of walk off going, I've shot three over and felt like I played actually really well. And it was a frustrating week, but in a good way, I felt like there was a lot of good out there and, you know, with a little bit of luck, a couple of yards here and there on a bunch of shots, a lot of scores could have been a lot of the scores could have been a lot better. And while I feel like I might not have been able to get to eleven under and challenge Scotty Scheffler, I certainly thought I played well enough to get to the top five. And that's that was a nice nice feeling to walk away from the week with, even though the result wasn't quite there. That guy. Oh, I mean, I just want some emotion from him. I mean, he just he's just, you know, so calm. He's almost asleep, isn't he? But, you know, when you've played the last four tournaments, right? I know you know this, mate. I mean, he's won three out of four and he lost in the playoff in the other one. He's just playing metronomic golf, isn't he? I, what, what was some crazy thing? Like, isn't it a sub... Isn't it an overpar round the whole year or something crazy? Yeah, I mean, I've played three of the four tournaments that he's played that he's done well on the last four weeks i didn't play bay hill but i've played i played bay hill last year and to go out and shoot 66 in the final round of bay hill on a brutal golf course shoot 
I think he shot 64 the final round of the players to win, and that's a brutal golf course. Um, you know, he was five foot away from being in the playoff in, in Houston. I think he missed a five footer to get in the playoff. And then obviously what he did, you know, 68 on Sunday at the Masters under all that pressure is seriously Im- impressive. Um, he just doesn't miss a shot. He makes great decisions. His short game's immaculate. When he when he misses a green, he makes it look really easy. And the only question mark up until the last four weeks has probably been his putter. And that hasn't really mattered too much in the last few weeks. He's been... It, it's been serviceable. I don't think he's been the best putter out there, but when you hit it as well as he has, it doesn't really matter. He's, you know, made the putts that mattered and yeah, it looks like he's going to be pretty hard to beat. Yeah. God, I mean, it's just, it was just amazing watching him, didn't he? He just destroyed that golf course. The thing that got me, mate, was on the second day watching the the bunkers and the sandstorm coming up from it. Is that the windiest you've ever played in? I don't think it's the windiest. I mean, we've had a couple of rounds in Scotland that have been probably worse, but I think the hardest thing with Augusta is it swirls through the pine trees um, and it was really gusty as well that day. So you'd stand there and just not have a clue what something was playing. You know, I remember standing on 15 and I'm one under for the tournament on the 15th tee and thinking the cut's going to be four over. Any other time you're thinking... You're, you know, five shots to four holes to play. You've got to do something ridiculously wrong. And I've got a wedge shot into the 15th hole going, oh, like this doesn't have to be that bad to make triple or double or or worse and make it really hard coming down the stretch. And there was a couple of guys, I think Justin Thomas played his last four holes, seven over par to miss the cut. And he's one of the best players in the world. So it's um, it was just so hard to pick out there. There was a disaster waiting at every turn. And... When it's like that, you really don't have to have a bad shot to get punished on a golf course like that. And that was, it might not be the windiest, but it's probably the hardest day I've played golf in. And I was pretty chuffed with 74 that day. Ryan Fox with us. I know that you've obviously seen the story as well about whether or not Rory McIlroy's been offered 700 and something million US dollars, almost a billion New Zealand to go to live golf. And he says, no, he's not going to go. And and John Rama, we can dug, tell, uh, dug up a couple of quotes. Uh, for us on Wednesday and said that uh, where Ram said he wouldn't go for a billion, he ends up going for a hundred million. Mate, uh, what's going on with it? Do you know anything ab- about this? And, and how can they still be throwing that kind of offers and that kind of money around when all of us are thinking that eventually the two tours are going to come back together? Oh, honestly, I don't know. It's one week to another on tour, you kind of, you hear different rumours and this and that, and that they might be close to getting a deal sorted or that, they're miles away and it seems to change week week in week out it's i don't know what's going to happen golf's in a very strange place i mean i i don't know if it's the merger talks was purely to just from both sides to get rid of the the legal ramifications you know the 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 big lawsuit that was going to probably screw both tours over um but you know at this stage it doesn't look like Anything's going to happen for a while. Um, I don't see a way back for the at the moment for the guys that have gone. Um, you know, and obviously Liv is still actively recruiting. And depending on who goes or not, you know, if someone like Rory or Scotty Scheffler happened to go, you know, that would be a huge dagger to the PGA Tour. But you know, vice versa, if they're offering that kind of money to uh, to Rory and Rory doesn't go, then you know, there's a bunch of live guys that are going to be out of contract coming up in the next year or two. You know, what does that tour look like going forward? You know, obviously they've still got some big names, John Rahm and Cam Smith, but it's all just a mess at the moment. I don't really know another way to describe it. And, you know, I'm a little bit removed from the politics of it, but yeah, I don't see how it all fits together at the moment. To hear the full interview, download the platform at the App Store. Via Platform Plus, you can go back and listen to the whole show and all of the interviews in full. Time to play. We need to talk. Another game. We need to talk. Of what is more chance of happening, I present two scenarios. Yes. You tell me which of the two is more chance of happening. We'll just go through the Super Rugby fixtures this weekend. The Indrua beat the Canes at home in Suva tonight. Canes unbeaten. Indrua have only won home games, Lachlan, but each one of those has been in Lotuka and it has been 
in the afternoon. So this is Subit, this is at night. Or Highlanders beat the Reds. That's tonight. Reds are at home. What is more chance of happening out of those two? And Drew win or Highlanders win? And Drew. I'm off the Highlanders. I'm absolutely off the Highlanders now. Sorry. Very disappointed in them last weekend. The Rebels aren't a bad side. They're proven to be good. But I just think that those are teams that, when you look at the talent, supposedly they're really good. Um, coaching group. I'm not saying the coaches aren't good, but the, the coaching group you've got, uh, I don't think there's an excuse for no, Highlanders to drop as many games as they have. Absolutely agree. Uh, they're going to have a worse season than they had last year. They won five games last year. They missed out on a points differential. How is this suffocating Fakatava's chance to be an all-black halfback this year? Oh, I don't think it is. I don't think um, with the all... Uh, well, there's been periods where this hasn't been the case, but I, I don't think if you're playing on a bad team, it really impacts you if you're playing well. Is he playing well? He is. From bits I've seen, he's been good. But I, but again, this is a little bit like what I, what I liked that Shag did when he was coaching them was essentially, if I pick you in the All Blacks and you play well for me, I'm not really going to worry too much if... Your yep, super yep, form is yep, really down. Yeah, I can't understand. Yeah, okay, so I think I think if, if if you've got your three or four halfbacks or first fives or whatever it is out of super rugby that you want to build up to be your your in, the integral parts of the All Blacks for years to come, you should be fine. I would like to think Fakatar was one of those. What is more chance of happening then? Next. The Andrua beat the unbeaten Hurricanes tonight, or tomorrow the Brumbies go to Eden Park and they beat the Blues. See, I don't actually think I don't I don't I know the Brumbies have only lost one game. They got they got they got dicked by the Chiefs and they're in third spot, okay, just behind the Blues. I don't think they're gonna beat the Blues. I don't why do I think that? I think the Blues are starting to um No, I can't The one thing I've noticed about the Blues this year, what Shag said, which was good the other day. Um so they've they, starched up front, haven't they've they? They've starched up yeah. front, their forwards yeah. are playing a lot yeah. better. They're good yeah. at their set pieces, yeah. they're good at the breakdown, much better than they have been the last couple of years, which is where True. they've been beaten badly by the Crusaders in particular. Uh, so I think who did he mention? He, he he mentioned three names. He mentioned Akira, Akira Yuani. He mentioned Hoskins Satutu, and, and he, he mentioned, mentioned Patrick. Patrick Twibble. Okay, now Patrick uh, cut him some slack because there's a couple of bad injuries this year already. But Patrick Patrick's also a guy that for a number of years, like the jury wasn't out on him. He was no, I, he, he hasn't been. He hasn't yeah. been the player that I think he's probably wanted himself to be because okay, you had Brody and Sam, and Brody and Sam were world class locks, right? Yeah. But Patrick was the next best. And, yeah. and I always expected him to be as good as those guys when he played, and he never has been. Mm, okay, I, th- I, I I would say... But then again, hey, they're the two best locks in the world yeah, for Yeah, I'd long say time, that so. you're not going to usurp one of those two guys, and he was a very good option off well, the bench. Well, I, I, look, you know, if he's... Uh, he's, he's not, for me, he's not a kid or a Hoskins to Tutu, who no, have been okay, no, he's very a, underwhelming for the under, Okay, years. and they've been very hot and cold. I would like Patrick and Scott... Barrett to be our locks for the All Blacks this year. Yeah, I think those that's a that's a good one-two punch at locks. So providing that he stays injury free. So, but you know, Steve Hansen, it's great. His brain is great, isn't it? Because he's pinpointing those two guys and saying, "You haven't. You've almost, but you haven't, and you've had many opportunities." And Akira is one of those frustrating players where you just think you've got everything. Mm. You're big. You're mobile. You've got experience. You played big matches. Well, the reason why he never got into the All Blacks when Shag was the coach is because of his work ethic. Steve Hansen pretty much said it publicly at the time that the reason why he's not in here is he just needs to sort his work ethic out. And I, th- I don't know if the kid ever really reacted that well. And then he moved to uh, blindside for the Blues. Didn't react playing. well with Justin in the middle of the street after losing an Ireland game on the Friday yeah, night, did he? That, yeah. All right, what is more chance of happening then? Final one before yes. we go to the break. And Drew beat the Canes tonight. Or the force in the wooden spoon match upset your Saders. My Saders. Tomorrow night. Nah, in Crusaders Perth. got it. Crusaders have got it. The dog's been bitten. Yeah, that's what he said, isn't it? Beware the shag, said that beware the bitten dog. Okay, I always thought the Crusaders would come back. They finished about 6, 7 or 8, and they'd be an absolute menace in the playoffs. No, no, no. I think the Force win this game, and I think the Saders go 12. Really? I think the, kidding. No. I think, no, I think the Saders are gone. I think they're mentally gone. Now, they they threw away a win last week. They don't even know how to well, win. one player threw away They win. They found new ways to lose that nobody had ever even discovered that no, you could lose that be, way. They're a better team than the Force. Come on, surely. Is surely? It, is it in Perth? It's in Perth. Nah. Crusaders win. Jason Costigan from RugbyLeague.com joins us. Congratulations on the site up and running, mate, and uh, very much look forward to your contributions and your commentaries. Well, Marty, thank you very much. Look, uh, it's a moving feast and it's an evolving situation. No doubt about that. It's uh, been quite enjoyable getting back uh, 
reading the news at the top of the hour. It's something I did in Sydney a couple of years ago on, on breakfast radio. And, uh, you know, and while I'm, you know, poking along, it's nice to hear your dulcet tones with uh, the great Tony Kemp on your podcast on rugbyleague.com. So I think it's great for rugby league supporters and lovers of the game and the, uh, no matter where you live in the world, you know, in our news in the last couple of days, we've been touching on Taz Batiri, the international uh, rugby league guru, going to Cameroon to help promote the game in West Africa. We've been talking, obviously, in the last 24 hours about the fish and his uh, move across the Tasman at the end of this season to join the, with the Warriors, which is a great story for rugby league, not just the Wars, uh, and, of course, Super League, what's happening in the south of France. So it's, it's a great world that we live in. St George was kicking off a Friday night. That's the eight o'clock game, New Zealand time. Both teams have won three games. Uh, look, this is traditionally a really tough game for the Warriors. I think if you go back through the stats, they've only won once or a couple of times at that venue. Well, that, look, it's interesting when you look at the the history between the two clubs, and I've called some games uh, at, at Wynn Stadium over the years, in, including uh, uh, some, some humdinging matches, if that's such a word, against the Warriors. I just wanted to bring your attention to how quickly things can change in the rugby league world, because I want to remind everybody, the fish is not playing tomorrow night. There's been so much talk and love and excitement and all that about James Fisher-Harris coming from Penrith at the end of the season on that four-year deal to the Warriors, but he is not in the team lineup for Coach Webster in this game in Wollongong. But I tell you who could be playing is Fa'amanu Brown, who not long ago was playing in the north of England with Hull FC, who are on, are on the nose in the north of England, and just as well for him, he got out of that environment, and he's going to be possibly playing for the Dragons, and he'll be jumping out of his skin to play. Lomax is playing in career-best football. This is a big danger game for the Warriors, especially last week where probably some people were saying maybe they were lucky to get the draw against Manly, but that's how the cookie crumbled in, in last week's round. But this game is a danger game for Andrew Webster. He will know that, and uh, look, I like what I saw from John O last week. Sean Johnson turning back the clock. That was a beautiful scintillating try that he produced. But the Dragons, this is danger stuff here. Lomax going back into the centres. That's because of Jack Bird being uh, sidelined because of concussion. I am tipping the Warriors, but I'm not super confident. I'm tipping the Warriors 1-12. to Next couple of games are gimme games. Eels home Dolphins and Panthers home West Tigers. Let's rubber stamp both, shall we? Well, I want to remind all people interested in this game between Parramatta and the Dolphins, firstly. It's not in Sydney's Golden West. And I'm going to actually put point the finger at Parramatta and say, when are you going to learn? The game is being played in Darwin, for goodness sake, and it's in mid-April. Now, I don't know when you were last in the top end, but I remember going to Richardson Park, which is the home of the Northern Territory Rugby League, to watch the 1987 Grand Final. And there's two seasons up there, hot and hotter. Yeah. And the Dolphins yeah. come from the Sunshine State. So I'm on the Dolphins, 1-12. to 12. I just think it's dumb and dumber that Parramatta haven't learnt their lesson. There's no Mitchell Moses. Brad Arthur's scratching his head. He can't get Lomax to Parramatta soon enough. It's not what he said on NRL 360. It's what he didn't say. I'm on the Dolphins, 1-12. to 12. In fact, I'll upgrade that. The Dolphins, 13-plus in the top end. As for the game west of the Blue Mountains, this is at Bathurst. Now, last year, Marty, last year, I know that's a long time ago, Tim Sheens took the Tigers up there and they pulled the pants down of the Panthers. I don't think it'll happen again. The Tigers are an improving team, but Penrith, I think, are a safe bet at Carrington Park and I believe Penrith will win 1-12. to Broncos Raiders, really interesting game this one, isn't it, mate? I and mean, this is the Saturday night, nine thirty-five New Zealand time game, and a Broncos side which is three and three, and they, you know, the, so are the Roosters and so are the Eels, uh, but they're up against a Raiders side who, at home, have been devastating. They're four and two at the moment. Is the home advantage what's going to tip it for you for the Broncos? Well, it's a big advantage playing at Suncorp, isn't it? And and with that massive crowd that they get in week in, week out. Uh, and so it's an unchanged lineup with uh, Skipper Adam Reynolds uh, uh, and, and Payne Haas not ready to come back. So they're not at full strength, the Brisbane Broncos. Look, I think Canberra in many ways, let's not kid ourselves, they were lucky to get the two points last week in, in controversial golden point extra time uh, in, that, in that victory, which has been well documented. Uh, look, can they get themselves up for this game against the Broncos? I, I'm not so sure. I'm really not so sure. Reese Walsh at the back, and uh, you know he can do anything in the game. Uh, look, 
the Canberra Raiders, Jamal Fogarty, no one probably expected him to be able to steer Canberra around the park, but Ricky Stewart rates him. Uh, there's a lot of pressure on him to, to try and get Canberra competitive in this game. I just can't see Canberra backing it up after what happened last week and all that drama. I think Brisbane won to 12 at the Cauldron. Costos Corner, Jason Costigan, rugbyleague.com. Jump the website, people. It is 24-hour league. It's got our podcast on it, the Tony Kemp <laughs> podcast, which is in. Thank you very much for adding it to it. It's got a whole lot of podcasts. It's got a whole lot of features. It's got live commentary. It's got news. It's everything rugby league. And I'm so glad that your old mate mascot has picked you up, mate. Two to go. Here we go. Dogs, Knights, both at two and four. I'll tell you what I like, liked about the dogs last week. I thought that left edge is awesome. If you get Kiko going and you get White and going, Jury going, and you've got the Fox on the wing, man, it was devastating when they got it right. Well, that's exactly right. And, and I think Canterbury are every chance of getting the chocolates here at Homebush. Uh, people might say, did he really say that? Yeah, I, I do say that. They've got plenty of strike there, as you allude to, with Addo Carr and, and, and Jacob Carraz and, and Stephen Crichton. You know, we, come, we talk about Penrith, all these players that have been leaving and, of course, the Fish joining them. At some stage, Canterbury must come good. Uh, Canterbury must come good. And, and, and Matt Burton will play a key role here. Look, Caelan Pong. Uh, not 100%. Uh, and, and I just think this game has uh, a smell about it. Uh, and I'm tipping Canterbury 1 to 12. I'm I think it's you. a very difficult assignment. Mm. Very difficult assignment. Look, I, I want to give one player a rap here who's playing for Newcastle and he's not playing in the spine. And, and, and he does a lot of the spade work, uh, as you'd expect, playing in the back row. Kai Pierce Paul. There's a number of these English players that have come out in recent times. He's going gangbusters uh, for for the Newcastle Knights, and and, and it deserves a rap. But I just think that uh, I think Canterbury can smell two points here, and I'm very confident they'll get the chocolates. That's our podcast for today. Thank you so much for listening. If you want to listen to the entire show, one till four, Monday to Friday. Download the Platform app and via Platform Plus you can go back and listen to whatever shows over however many weeks at your leisure, at your listening pleasure. Platform Plus. First thing to do though is download the Platform app. Devlin. Unbelievable. Incredible. The Platform.